We're going down under to Australia with its unique character and diverse landscape. To put it simply, no destination in the world compares. According to the United Nations, Australia is the second best country in the world to live. Or is it? You might change your mind about this place after you see this. 20 Strangest Things Recently Discovered in Australia Painting of a Kangaroo The history of the Aboriginal people in Australia has been severely overlooked over the past few decades, but now that they are properly taking a look at their culture and heritage, what they're finding is truly astounding. Some historians claim that these people are the oldest civilization on Earth. You might not think that this kangaroo painting is that impressive. But give the artists some credit, they did it 17,000 years ago. This is 14,000 years before ancient Egypt and about 16,500 years before European settlers arrived. This painting was found in the Northeast Kimberley region of Western Australia. It's Australia's earliest painting, but still 3,000 years younger than the famous cave paintings found in France. Similarly, there are also ancient paintings from 40,000 years ago found in Southeast Asia. And here's where things get incredibly interesting. The pictures in Southeast Asia and the picture in Australia bear a similar resemblance. This suggests that there may have been a cultural link between these Aboriginal Australians and the people who inhabited Asia at the time. The fact that they're drawing pictures is also important. It indicates that they had spare time and had the desire to be creative and express themselves. They also had a culture and wanted to define themselves. Early art was also closely linked to religion, and this was their way of paying homage to the gods that they worshipped. We have got some incredible Aboriginal art coming up later on in this video as well. Fasten your seatbelts because it's time for today's sweet topic. This discovery in Australia scares scientists, especially because it should have been found in Egypt. Scientists discovered the remains of a mummy in a 2,500-year-old coffin that was previously classified as empty. When scientists opened the coffin last year, they were surprised to find the remains of humans. The sarcophagus was one of four sourced around 1860, but experts classified it as empty. The object had received little attention while Egyptologists studied the other coffins, which appeared more impressive and had complete mummies. Experts would try to identify the remains, which were badly torn apart and ransacked by tomb raiders at some point in history. In certain parts of Australia, mummification was sometimes one part of body disposal. The body of the deceased was sometimes placed on a platform in a tree and exposed to sunlight causing it to dry out. In many cases, the corpse was intended to be preserved only for a short time, until all mortuary and mourning rites were completed. But this situation is unique. It's amazing that over time we learned that different cultures had really shocking ways to deal with the dead. So leave a comment about it down below using hashtag sweet topic. Evidence of Aboriginal Habitation But moving back to the Aboriginal Australians, we have some of the oldest man-made objects on Earth. While the kangaroo painting dates back to 17,000 years, researchers found artifacts in Kakadu National Park which dates these people much further into the past. Believe it or not, artifacts have been found that date back 80,000 years. These are believed to belong to the Mirar people who come from northern Australia. These artifacts were buried beneath two meters of sand at the Arnhem Land Plateau, which is at the very top of northern Australia. These included seed grinding tools and ground edge stone axes. They did not have just one cookie cutter style knife for everything, but had four or five different sharp tools for cutting different things. A question that historians have debated for centuries is when humans first arrived in Australia. The first humans ever started in Africa and gradually spread out across the world. During the dinosaur years, there was only one continent called Pangaea, and this gradually split out into the continents we live in today. So, 80,000 years later, Australia may not have been isolated from the rest of the world as it is today. These new artifacts support the idea that the Aboriginal Australians came a lot earlier than what was initially thought. It's believed that they crossed over from South Asia. They believed that Australia back then had a much cooler climate and lower sea levels, which made it easier for these people to travel across. In fact, these Aboriginal people were in Australia during an ice age, so for most of the year, they suffered through extremely cold temperatures. Ground Edge Stone Axe 
And this research into Aboriginal people is not just breaking new ground in Australia, but the world. An axe that was dated to be 35,500 years old is believed to be the world's oldest axe. We take axes and knives for granted today, but thousands of years ago this was considered a groundbreaking invention and saved people hours of time. People at this time were hunter-gatherers, and without a sharp object, hunting would be a lot, a lot more difficult and the axe gradually evolved into uses too. As well as paintings of kangaroos, Aboriginal art also involves a lot of carvings made into walls, where the knife was something which was not a way to create some art. The earliest ground-edged axes found beforehand were only 20,000 to 30,000 years ago. It was originally believed that this was a European invention, which begs the question of whether there were cultural links between Aboriginals and Europeans, or they both invented them separately. It was generally assumed that Europeans were more advanced than the Aboriginals, but this new evidence gives us the complete opposite impression. Fossilized dinosaur footprints found in Western Australia But before any humans set foot in Australia, there were dinosaurs, and some truly amazing discoveries have been made in this area. Footprints were found to be 5 feet 9 inches long, which is the size of the average human, so the earliest known Australian is this dinosaur. This track belonged to a sauropod, which is the family of dinosaurs that we mostly associate with Brontosaurus. This dinosaur footprint was the longest ever found, breaking a previous record in Bolivia, which was just 3 feet 9 inches. This footprint was found on the Dampier Peninsula in Australia's northwest. It's since been dubbed Australia's Jurassic Park. 21 different dinosaur tracks were found, with rocks dating back as far as 140 million years. You might be wondering, weren't dinosaurs living all over the world? Why is this random part of Australia finding more footprints than everywhere else? Well, the weather and environmental conditions here are a key part. In this part of Australia, the footprints did not come across the same levels of wind and erosion as in other parts of the world. Other footprints were found in this area. However, a lot of them are on jagged cliffs and underwater. There are some dinosaur footprints that are only available during certain times of the year. Under a lava tubes Another thing you need to know is that this continent is full of volcanoes. But what if we told you that you could walk straight through a volcano? Well, that's kind of what you're doing at these under a lava tubes. The park was established in 2009 to protect Australia's longest lava tube and the unique fauna and flora found in the area. In North Queensland, there are caves that were believed to be formed 190,000 years ago. These caves were initially lava tubes, and 23 billion cubic liters of lava have spewed through them. One of these tubes is now the Bayless Cave, which is over a kilometer long, 11 meters high, and 20 meters wide. It's been nicknamed the Bad Air Cave as its carbon dioxide has been recorded to hit 5.9%, and at night, microbats and night tigers roam the area. However, Night tigers are considered harmless and are uninterested in humans. 100 million year old plesiosaur In Australia, there is an amateur group of female paleontologists known as the Rock Chicks. While you'd expect a group of girls calling themselves this name would be busy listening to ACDC, it's actually a much different type of rock that they're interested in. And while their discoveries of fossils and remains started out as a simple hobby, they actually made the groundbreaking discovery of a 100 million year old sea creature. This creature, known as the Elasmosaurus, dates back 80.5 million years and is basically a ginormous swimming reptile. Experts are quick to point out that it's not a dinosaur but was a reptile living during the time of dinosaurs. Normally, their remains have been found in North America, so it was that bit more fascinating that they were found down under. Historians have compared this to finding the Rosetta Stone, a scripted stone that helped historians unlock other secrets from ancient Egypt. In the same way, this skull can be used to find out more things which have previously mystified experts about this era. They've never before found a skull that's attached to a body. For a paleontologist, this is essentially like hitting the jackpot. The back half of this specific elasmosaur's body is missing, but the skull, neck, and front half of the body are all still present. Typically, the body of an elasmosaur would expand with gas as it decomposed, rising to the surface where it would float at the whim of the tides and scavengers. These bodily parts would rarely drop to the same position once the gas dispersed since there was a meter-long space between the body and the head. 
so having all of these body parts together is like finding missing pieces of a puzzle. So to the rock chicks, we salute you for your hard work. Aboriginal fish traps While we looked at Aboriginal paintings earlier, this other discovery showed us what they like to eat. Fish What looked like a bunch of rocks dumped in a riverbed is actually one of the oldest man-made objects ever. This, believe it or not, is a 40,000-year-old fish trap. Instead of throwing in a fishing line and hoping for the best, they devised these specific traps. They made a teardrop-shaped pool in the hopes that fish would swim inside them. According to local lore, the creation figure Biami revealed how these traps were made. However, getting these fish into these ponds was the easy part. Once they reached the traps, the ancient aboriginals had difficulty removing the fish from the river. Sometimes they used spears, but often they used their bare hands. It's argued that nets were eventually introduced throughout the years as well. Like all things aboriginal, there are incredible stories of how these fishing traps came to be. They tell the story of a creation figure named Bayami. He came across the Ngimba Whalewan people who were experiencing famine, so he introduced them to this fishing trap to give them the food they needed. However, there is some debate on how old these fish ponds are. Some dispute the 40,000 figure and contend that they were as early as 1,000 years ago. However, some Aboriginal people continue to use these traps to catch fish. Great Barrier Reef Despite the amazing amount of natural wonders spread across Australia, the most magnificent place is the Great Barrier Reef. It's often described as the rainforest of the sea, due to the sheer volume and variety of marine life. It's the youngest reef in the world and is considered the most important. It originally started 600,000 years ago, and the modern incarnation started 9,500 years ago. So, what is a reef? These are limestone structures formed by underwater organisms called corals, little organisms called polyps, which have sac-like bodies and developing tentacles, create corals. This first ever reef formed 500 million years ago. The Great Barrier Reef has 3,000 individual reefs, 900 islands, and stretches for 2,600 kilometers. It's essentially the size of Italy and can be viewed from space. One third of the world's coral lives here, and it's home to 5,000 marine and mammal species. And it's not something you can swim out to either. It essentially takes a 45-minute boat trip to get there. Because of the sheer abundance of fish, Aboriginal people have been living there for 60,000 years. There are stories from these people that recall the islands by the Great Barrier Reef being once part of the mainland. The famous fish traps we spoke about earlier are also present in this area. And like the rainforest, this place is under threat, and there are many efforts to protect it. It's important to protect this reef because of the enormous amount of scientific research that can be found here. It also protects Australia from ocean waves reaching its shore. And lastly but not least, it's an incredibly beautiful part of the world. Quinquen Rock Art When you look upon some of these next paintings, you would probably mistake them for something out of ancient Egypt. The fact is that they came from Australia and appeared thousands of years before ancient Egypt. They appear in southern Cape York, the northernmost point in Australia. While the picture of the kangaroo at the beginning was interesting, these next paintings paint a better picture of just who these aboriginals were. The pictures gave us an impression on what they thought about the afterlife and the creation of this earth. They're believed to be 15,000 to 30,000 years old and stretch across 230,000 hectares of sandstone. The paintings themselves contain stick figures, which are meant to symbolize spirits. The term quinquant refers to all of the various ancestral spirits that occupy the landscape. They're depicted in art together with other secular representations of plants and animals. The Aboriginal people saw themselves at one with nature. The fact that they're incredibly well preserved also says a lot about the subsequent generations of people who came afterward. These paintings have rarely been touched and seem to have had a respectful admiration of these paintings too. Sadly, in the 1870s, a lot of these Aboriginal people were chased from their land during the gold rush, but even then, these paintings were kept the way they were, and it's easy to see why you would want to preserve these amazing paintings. Burrup Peninsula's Rock Art And on the other side of Northern Australia is the Burrup Peninsula, which also has amazing art on display. Art in this region is believed to be 30 to 40,000 years old. This is thousands of years before the likes of ancient Egypt and Stonehenge were around. They were essentially chipping away images onto these rocks. And while tools and fishing nets are important findings, 
the discovery of art is perhaps even more fascinating. As we mentioned earlier, art is something you do when you have free time and not just trying to survive. Art is also seething you do when societies try to express who and what they are. The fact that this was even around so long ago makes the mind boggle. But wait till you hear this. On the coast of southeastern Australia is the island of Tasmania. However, this art shows pictures of Tasmanian tigers, which are animals that now only live in Tasmania. There are pictures of these tigers on the complete opposite end of Australia, and experts believe that these Tasmanian tigers once lived in mainland Australia. And by the looks of these paintings, they lived all over it. Capricorn Caves, Queensland Imagine you're wandering around Australia, and suddenly you found some caves, and then you realize that nobody else knows about these caves except you. This is what happened to a Norwegian migrant named John Olsen. And rather than share these wonderful caves with other people, he decided to declare it as his own. In fact, he got these caves legally registered as his own property where he signed his name down as the landowner under a leasehold title, or in other words, finders keepers, losers weepers. With the caves now his, he decided to open them up as an attraction, and now is one of the most popular scenic attractions in all of Queensland. It's also open to abseiling and rock climbing too. At 400 million years old, it's described as Queensland's oldest playground. But the best time to visit these caves is during the summer solstice. One of the cave ceilings has a natural aperture where the midday light enters, creating a strong concentrated beam of sunlight. The caves are so beautiful that people have found some sort of spiritual connection with them, to the extent that they've even built a cathedral inside. This beautiful lighting and acoustics make it a beautiful place of worship. It's also an incredibly cool and off-the-wall place to get married. Cooper Petty And speaking of accidentally finding something amazing, this is exactly what happened in a place known as Cooper Petty. In 1914, a 14-year-old boy was wandering through Adelaide, Australia. He was with his father and other men who were out in the middle of nowhere looking for gold. He decided to wander out on his own and went missing. Incredibly worried, his father and the other men went on a search to find him. He soon returned later that night and carried a bag of gemstones across his shoulder. He had discovered a place chopped full of gemstones and had unknowingly founded an entire town. Following this discovery, miners began to settle here and mine for more gemstones. Once miners began settling, stores began to open. Someone opened a bar or a restaurant for the miners, then some of the miners decided to permanently settle here. The miners brought their families, so they needed schools and hospitals, and eventually it became an entire town. Strangely enough, there's no big mining company present. Instead, budding miners simply obtain a permit and start digging. And so far, we haven't mentioned that the Aboriginal people also have the classic Aussie sense of humor. Cooper Petty is an Aboriginal phrase that simply means white person's hole in the ground. Cutter Cutter Caves Next up, we have the beautiful Cutter Cutter Caves. Cutter Cutter is a Jawan term that means many stars, as they consider caves and caverns to be the resting places of the stars during the day. There are many artifacts and campsites seen throughout the caves, which show that the Jawan people often hid out in these caves. Like the Capricorn Caves we mentioned earlier, Europeans also discovered these completely by accident. They were found by an ordinary stockman in 1900. However, he did not apply the finder's keeper's rules like the caves beforehand, and instead, these are owned by the local authorities. Fast forward to World War II, and soldiers referred to it as the 16 Mile Cave. The soldiers fighting in this war would use the stalactites as targets when practicing their shooting. But in hindsight, it's probably not a wise idea to practice rifle shooting in an incredibly dark cave. By 1967, these caves were placed under the management of the Northern Territory Reserves Board. The public has access to 240 meters of the 750 meter long Cutter Cutter Cave, which is lit and has pathways. The park contains a number of other cave networks that are not accessible to the general public. And during the wet season, a lot of these caves are completely flooded. Carlu Carlu Conservation Reserve in 1870, a Scottish explorer named John Ross was traveling through Warramungu in Australia. He was terrified by the region and when he came across these two lone standing boulders, who believed that some evil spirits were at bay, he looked at these stones and said, this is the devil's land. He's even dumped his bag of marbles around the region. 
These are two giant boulders which are somehow still standing up. A more modest description was given by the aboriginals as Karlu Karl simply means round boulders and they have some fascinating myths and legends about how these boulders came to be. The most well-known story about these boulders is the fact that there was once an ancient ancestor known as a range. He fashioned a string belt, and as he began spinning his hair into strings, he began dropping big clumps of his hair. It's believed that these clumps turned into boulders. However, the scientific explanation is that they were formed millions of years ago due to erosion. Or as John Ross claims, the devil carelessly left his marbles there. Janolin Caves New South Wales is the world's oldest caves. These are the last caves we'll look at on this list and we think that we have saved the best for last. Some even estimate that these caves go back 340 million years old. To put that into context, the Jurassic period was between 145 and 200 million years. The T-Rex came and went during this time of these caves. However, these caves were not officially founded by European settlers until the 1800s. Initially, the British used Australia as a place to bring convicts who would be either imprisoned or made work. These were for sometimes incredibly petty crimes like stealing a handkerchief. One day, a convict went missing and brothers Charles and James Whalen went out on the lookout for him. It was during this time that they accidentally stumbled upon this awesome cave. However, the Aboriginal people were well aware of these caves and were mystified by their beauty. In fact, the Gundagura people would even bring sick people into these caves and believe that this very place had its own healing powers. As well as its amazing views, the fact that it's full of ancient rocks is for scientists like hitting the jackpot. Unicorn Brewery Cellars Australia is famously a beer-drinking country. In the historic mining town of Burra is a haunted brewery. If you drank a beer in South Australia between the years 1873 and 1902, it was most likely brewed at this extensive brewery. In the early 20th century, the brewery was shut down. But since the 1970s, the underground tunnels have been reopened and strange sightings have been experienced. They were even the setting of Wolf's Creek too. Several people have reported hearing voices or footsteps in the tunnels while no one else is nearby. Others have also reported seeing shadow figures in the tunnels. Unlike other haunted areas, there are no specific tragic events or tales which explain these sightings. Nonetheless, the people who have passed through have this eerie feeling that they're being watched, which could be by former workers of the brewery lurking through its many tunnels. Mangarlo Mallee in Australia In Braidwood, New South Wales is Australia's loneliest tree. In 1985, Miss R. Jean was going on a casual walk and stumbled upon a strange-looking tree. Its distinctly curved-looking leaves made it stand out completely from the rest of the plants surrounding it. What she soon found out was this was no ordinary tree, but something extremely old. It's believed to be between 3,000 and 13,000 years old. It was until five years later that another tree of these trees were discovered. In total, there are only six left on Earth. Experts are fascinated by these trees because they're also like taking a trip back in time. The fact that they're so rare is indicative that they cannot survive easily in the current climate of Australia. So, this tree could help explain what the climate was like in the previous ages. More 1,000-legged millipede If you're squeamish about bugs, maybe cover your eyes. You may have heard of a centipede, which is an insect with roughly 100 little leggings. However, there's also something known as a millipede, which has 10,000 legs. One of these creatures was found in a mine in Western Australia, and experts were astonished to learn that it had 1,306 legs along its 3.78-inch frame. This finding was groundbreaking as the previous record holder for this was almost half that at 750 legs. Researchers did stumble upon this creature but had to catch it. They lowered a cup filled with leaf litter on a string, waited for a few weeks, and eventually this thing showed its face and all of its 1,306 legs. What's strange is that despite its overabundance of legs, it has no eyes. However, it has no need for eyes as it lives deep in the dark underground where there is little, if any, light. The massive amount of legs means that this creature moves up to eight different directions at once. But because its habitat is 60 meters underground, there's still not a lot we know about these creatures. Experts assume that they eat types of fungi underground, but they're not sure what types of fungi they eat. 
Experts have also found 100 glands along the body secrete an alkaloid toxin. It's believed that this is used to deter predators like ants, beetles, and moles. That sounds a bit gross, so let's have a look at Australia's cuter creatures, Tasmanian devils. If you watched Looney Tunes as a kid, you might remember the Tasmanian devil. But these creatures are real and live on the Australian island of Tasmania. They look a lot like a small dog and usually have black fur and white markings. When they're babies, or joeys as they're called, they can be as small as a grain of rice. However, don't let their cuteness fool you, because there's a reason why they're referred to as devils. They have a bite so powerful that it can crush bones and they often let out loud and disturbing screams. In fact, they got their devil names because European settlers kept hearing ungodly screams and then suddenly realized they were coming from these little guys. There are marsupials like kangaroos and koalas and are the largest carnivorous marsupial in the world. Marsupials are a particular type of animal that are only found in Australia. Because Australia is so far removed from the rest of the planet, these animals simply evolved on their own and have been isolated from the rest of the world. As we mentioned earlier about the Tasmanian tiger, it's believed that the Tasmanian devil also lived on mainland Australia as well. Wittenoom, Western Australia When driving on a road in Western Australia, you'll come across several warning signs. If you dare ignore all of these signs all the way through, you'll find an abandoned town, a town that nobody has lived in since the 1950s. And this desertion of this town can be explained with one word, asbestos. Asbestos was typically in homes because it was good for insulating and fireproofing your home. But rather than safeguarding your home, this chemical turned out to be dangerous. If you're exposed to too much of it, you could develop mesothelioma, a rare kind of cancer. But it wasn't asbestos in homes that the people of Witternoon needed to worry about. This was a mining village, and the chemical they were mining was, you guessed it, asbestos. So once the word got out that this chemical could cause cancer, most of the people packed up their bags and never came back. As a result, the village was essentially deserted in the 1970s. The area has been designated as a hazardous site since thousands of people perished there. It ceased to exist as a town in 2006. It was taken off maps and the town's road signs were taken down. However, despite the dangers associated with this place, there are still some visitors. In the same way that people visit the site of Chernobyl, a number of thrill-seekers ignore the risks involved and cannot resist the urge to visit this fascinating and apocalyptic town. But if you're backpacking across Australia, please give this town a miss. And that brings us to the end of this video. Hopefully, we've inspired you to go backpacking out in Australia. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you again real soon.